What's shaking? My name's Cam and welcome back. Welcome back to another video. Happy 2021, everyone. I hope you had a great Christmas. I hope you had a good New Year's. Let's all make a promise right now to really just spank 2021 on the ass. Show it who's boss, you know? Consensually, of course. Personally, I'm planning to square dance my way through the next 12 months as productively as possible. I have a lot of plans and goals for my writing and for this YouTube channel, but that's another video. So not counting my short story in the booktuber horror anthology uh, Local Haunts right here, I don't actually have any published books out right now. I did have a self-published fantasy series like a while ago, but I did have to put that one down like a dog with a gambling debt, unfortunately. I actually made a video not too long ago on that fantasy series and why I actually killed it. I'll leave a card up here. I consider myself and anyone else who writes, uh, be that recreationally or professionally a writer, but without any published work out there in the world, I'm really hesitant to call myself an author. Author tuber, yes. Author, no. Come on. Keep up, guy. Keep up, guys. But that'll, that all changes, damn it, in less than two weeks. The moment that I and like three of you watching this have been waiting for is coming up. In less time than it takes to uh, grow a beard, uh, for me at least, I will have a full length novel for sale. On the 25th of January, my psychological horror book that I've been working on for nearly two years will be available uh, for purchase. It's called Welcome Descent. I'm sure a lot of you already know that. Uh, I mean, it is the talk of YouTube at the moment, but there is a reason I'm making this particular video today. I have some updates regarding the release of the book that I want to share with you. At the end of this video, I actually have some new stuff to show you that you probably haven't seen yet. And I also want to just very quickly discuss some of the issues that I had with the final steps of publishing this book because Jesus, my dude, I had some issues. First things first, the book is actually technically available right now on Amazon. You can find the link in the description below or you can go to my uh, brand new author website camwolfbooks.com. I just want to add I got a new author photo taken recently and I think I think I look very handsome. Take that girl who rejected me in high school. Girls? M mul multiple multiple girls? Bitches. My friends have already uh, given me the obligatory amount of smack for the pose in this photo. I know, cringe, whatever. But hey, being sexy has a price. Uh, like, like being alone all the time. So you can technically pre-order Welcome Descent uh, right now. I wanted that option to be available to you uh, more than a month ago but we had some major editing issues, unfortunately. Some stuff that kind of flew under the radar and was noticed, luckily, at the last minute and had to be ironed out. The thing is, though, you can pre-order the ebook and the physical copies on um, a lot of Amazon pages, including, like, Australia's Amazon page. But for some reason, a lot of others, like the US Amazon page, only has the ebook for pre-order right now. I don't know why, I did my best to look into it, but it's a real F around. Doesn't matter though, you can pre-order the ebook right now if you want to, or you can wait until the actual uh, release date, 25th of January, and get yourself one of these very pretty physical copies. There is the paperback or the hardcover, and I think both look really awesome. I like the paperback because I went with like a snug kind of uh, size. This is the old trade paperback sizes that you don't see much of anymore. It just reminds me of the old school horror books and I like how it fits snugly in your hand. But then obviously the hardcover is the hardcover. It's very pleasing to look at. It's, you know, nice as well. I know a lot of people prefer getting hardcovers uh, for the aesthetic and for the comfort. So that's an option as well. If you're in the US, you can pre-order the ebook now or you can wait and you can pick up one of the physical copies or you can get none at all. It's cool. It's not like I need to eat or anything. Jokes aside, I really, really do appreciate all of the love and support you guys have been giving me so far. It, it, it really does. It means a lot. It's kind of blown me away, and to be honest, it's more than I deserve, so thank you. Now, I published through Ingram Spark, uh, mainly because it was the only option really where I could have a hardcover. And for the most part, it really has been great, but I did have some issues. I plan on making a full video diving into the pros and cons in my experience with publishing through Ingram Spark because it's really different to when I published through CreateSpace or KDP as it's now called. But one thing I do want to say in this video is that the fee for uploading new files uh, for your books is absolute BS, man. It's absolute robbery. I had to fix a minor error with the formatting like just last week and to upload new interior files it was about $30 
for each, like for the ebook, hardcover, and the paperback. It cost me nearly $90 just to upload new interior files for books that weren't even being sold yet, and I just, I think that's kind of bullshit. I'll also be making a full video about the costs involved with self-publishing this book, but I do want to wait a little bit until the book's been selling for a bit so I can see what the return profits look like, and then I can also include that in the video to try and see, like, how much I lost or how much I made kind of thing. What I will say, though, is that I have... <laughs> I've spent a ton, man, I've spent a lot of money on this. That was my choice, and to be honest, I just, I really don't see myself making it all back. I, it's just a lot of money, but you know what, that's okay. Surprisingly, I'm actually really okay with that. I would simply be happy if people are reading it and enjoying it. That's, that's really all I can ask for, you know? Another, <laughs> another weird issue that I had for a bit there was that the genre categories for Welcome Descent were all listed as, like, erotica genres. I'm not joking, I can't find the screenshot right now, I did screenshot it and if I find it I'll put it up here on the screen, but you know how it lists like three categories? It was like erotic horror, erotic thriller, and erotic psychological. I have no idea why or how that happened, but luckily it was fixed after one email. I don't know man, maybe they heard about the groundbreaking bizarro erotica book I wrote for a laugh ages ago on YouTube. Maybe they saw that and thought it was like a shared universe, you know, like the MCU but for horny nonsense. So those weren't the only issues I had during the publishing and formatting of this book, but like I said, there will be other videos. There will be a whole other video going into the intricate details of that. I just wanted to make this video to let you guys know that we're nearly there, what I've been working towards for like nearly two years or more. It wasn't easy. It was an intense story. It was a difficult process and it took a lot out of me, but um, I'm proud of myself for finishing it, and uh, in retrospect, I'm really proud of the finished product as well. If you want to know more about what Welcome Descent actually is or the story involved, I'll leave a card up here for a video where I talk all about that. You can watch that or you can stick around for just a minute or two longer because I have something very special to show you. I'm going to show you two things. The first one you might have already seen because I showed it a little while ago, but that's the book trailer for Welcome Descent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that in just a second. Like I said, you might have already seen it, but I'm showing you again, so... Shush. The second one I am very excited to show you, no one's seen this yet, it is a snippet from a professional audio recording of Welcome Descent, Chapter 1. It's freaking awesome, dude. I don't have a full audiobook for Welcome Descent at this point, it's just, it's just too expensive. Like I said, I've already spent so much money on this and I just, I literally can't afford to get a full audiobook done. But people have been asking for a sample of the story, like uh, the first chapter or something like that, and I'm happy to give that to you. But rather than just post up the first chapter in writing, I thought I would do something special. I thought I would get it professionally narrated. And I did that. I had the full first chapter narrated. It's it's about 51 minutes long, so I can't post the full thing in this video. But I'll show you a snippet of it, and if you want to listen to the full chapter 1 audio recording, I will also leave a link in the description below to go check that out. Or you can just hop over to my horror YouTube channel, Wolf's Inferno. That's where I put up the book trailer and stuff as well. Anyway, that's it. That's all the info I have for now. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your love and support. It is just... It's meant the world to me, so thank you. I will see you in the next video, but for now, enjoy. Catch ya. One week was all it took. I used to have everything before, before it happened. My cars, the house, my wife, they're all gone now. I've been hearing things since that storm arrived. Voices, voices that shouldn't be there. They're just outside my door. Welcome Descent by Cam Wolf. Enjoy the climb. Beware the fall. Welcome Descent by Cam Wolf. Chapter 1 Steel and Concrete. 
On the closest thing to a good day, it would be a resilient beam of morning sunshine that woke Joe. Blistering golden light would slice through even the densest mid-morning cloud and creep its way to the snoring, farting mass of limbs named Joseph, still tangled in his sheets. On this particular Friday, however, it was his radio alarm, or more specifically, the opening brass band notes of Jingle Jangle Jingle by Kay Kaiser that did the job. yippee there'll be no wedding bells for today. <sighs> Fuck me, Joe groaned. He flailed an arm to silence the ear-splitting merry tune, failing spectacularly and knocking over a whiskey bottle instead, the now-empty bottle that had helped him get to sleep the night before. It fell to the floor with an almighty hollow thunk. Joe stretched out the side of his face with a stiff, clammy hand and let his mouth open wide in an aggressive yawn as if to curse the sun for rising. He had turned 42 the week before and Every day since had been a taunting, spiteful reminder of how easily his body would give in under the slightest physical strain. Apparently, now simply waking up was asking a little too much. He gave one more strenuous groan and threw himself out from the bedsheets, nearly landing on the bottle he had just backhanded. The vile mix in his stomach rolled in place, launching a bitter, battery-fluid taste of acid reflux into the back of his throat. God damn, he said with a scowl. He ran a hand through the thinning pale hair of his temple and stepped up to the floor-to-ceiling window, stretching his arms out at unnatural angles. It was a shitty day, to say the least. The congested city street below was bathed in a miserable sheet of mist and stark blue shadow cast down from the impenetrable gray clouds high above. They were tumbling over each other like the fourth of a swelling evening tide and barely a candle's glow of sunlight could be seen through the black. Joseph imagined the heavens were mocking him, daring him to hope for a good day. Go ahead, asshole. I dare you. I see half a smile and I'll be shitting hell. All the pedestrians and cars eleven stories below were dulled in detail and volume, sealed away behind that magnificent two-inch glass. Joe liked the view from up here. It was the distance he enjoyed. The distance between himself and the swarm of always stinking, always staring nobodies. He regarded the impending storm once more before making his way across the small studio apartment into the conjoined kitchen. He made sure to nudge the bottle with his heel so that it rolled under the king-sized bed with a prolonged rumble. The final notes of the swing jazz monstrosity had finally burst through and distorted squawks, and now the day's news was being read by the world's least entertaining DJ. His voice was a droning bass, and he sounded about as pleased with his job as Joe was about his breakfast, the brittle remnants of a long-expired box of cereal. We have a big one coming in, folks. We're looking at a Category 2 for now, but keep me close because we may have a 3 on our hands. You don't want to be strolling around the streets of Dawn Valley during this one, that's for sure. No shit, Joe snorted. He spat the last bite of his sticky wheat cereal back into the suspiciously thick milk of his bowl. He grabbed one of the last few apples from the fridge and gripped it between his teeth before snatching the Oxford button down from the back of his one and only dining chair. The shower would have to wait until after work. He had set the wrong time on the alarm, again, and the large red numbers were blinking at him with merciless repetition. 10.34. Shit. He didn't dress quickly enough, however, to avoid seeing his reflection in the darkened glass of the window across the room. There's nothing quite like spotting yourself in poor lighting, especially while bent over trying to fish a tie from a pile of dirty laundry. He was, by any definition, well-groomed. He kept his hair cut tidy and his face clean-shaven, but below the neck he was hiding a chest of tangled white hair and the early warning signs of a beer gut. After deciding two seconds of self-pity were two seconds too many, he finished his Windsor knot, slipped on his black suit jacket, and laced up his derby shoes. One of the greatest pleasures for Joe in his day was the feeling of the finely woven wool of the suit pants against his knees and the way the sleeves hugged his biceps. This suit, a pristine Valentino, was the last remaining survivor of his collection. The rest had been sold for a painfully slight margin of their original cost, just to secure his place in what, for the last ten months, was now his reluctant home. In a matter of minutes, he looked as though he could have been escorting the United States president across the White House lawn. 
Of course, the reality was far from being that glamorous. He stepped up to the window, doing his best to erase the admittedly still slightly intoxicated shirtless sad sack from his memory and replace it with the new well-dressed doppelganger. It was while adjusting his tie a third time that something smacked the glass with such force that it rattled the frame. Listen to the rest of chapter 1 of Welcome Descent at Wolf's Inferno, or find the link in the description below.